Greetings, Eric Packer from New Zealand, The Naturopath. Thanks for tuning in. I got a question from a subscriber here asking me what are the best possible foods to eat for my gut, for my digestive system. So what do you think are the best foods to eat for your digestive system? Would they, they, they be the highly colored foods? Would they be organic foods? Would they be cultured and fermented foods? What type of foods would be good for the gut? The two big reasons why you want to eat really good foods for the gut, especially for the intestine, uh, would be the prebiotic nature about the food that needs to be important and the fiber content. Those are two big things that we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about the phytonutrients, you know, like the different types of vitamins and minerals uh, in the foods themselves, but we're going to talk about the beneficial bacteria, about the importance of feeding the bacteria in your gut, especially in the colon, the large intestine, which contains incredible amounts of bacteria, thousands of times more bacteria in that part of your body than any other part of your body. So you need to really feed these bacteria. They need a lot of food. Now, many, many stool tests have shown me that so many people out there don't have enough beneficial bacteria in their gut. So many people, it's incredible. I've performed thousands of stool tests now on people in over 40 different countries. So I'm well positioned to talk about this topic. I see an increasing amount of people from all the EU countries, you know, the European countries, um, African countries, <clears throat> people from the Middle East, and of course people from all the states of America, Australia, New Zealand, all of those places I've done stool testing with these people with various labs, but mainly doctor's data and Genova Diagnostics. So a recurring thing I'm finding with many people now, I'm seeing more parasites than ever. I'm seeing more bad bacteria, but I'm particularly seeing lower levels of beneficial bacteria, especially the bifidobacteria and the lactobacillus species, the two main groups of beneficial bacteria. Now, why would that be? Well, in my opinion, I don't think people are really eating really good food. And if they are, they're not eating enough food. I just read a study showing the, Amer the average American will be lucky to eat 14 grams of fiber in their diet per day and maybe one to three grams of prebiotic uh, sugars in their diet you know, through the foods that they eat. Whereas in people in other countries, underdeveloped countries, eat up to 10 to 15 grams of these prebiotic sugars like inulin, fructooligosaccharides, and galacto-oligosaccharides. And they're also eating up to six or seven times as much fiber as the average American. So if you go to underdeveloped countries, if you, for example, look at tribes in the Amazon, these people will eat 100 grams of fiber per day, whereas the average person in New York would eat 13 grams of fiber per day. It's not hard to see why people in New York are going to be more inclined to have digestive problems than people, say, that live in the Amazonian region. Big difference. So what are some of the best food sources? Well, if we look in particular, <clears throat> I think most of the foods that we're going to talk about that contain uh, these sugar, high sugar content, uh, the prebiotic sugars, you know, these are, the, these are basically the sugars or fibers that feed up the bacteria. These have a high fiber content as well. So these, in my opinion, are the key foods for you to eat and to eat them regularly and all the time. I'm not talking about cultured or fermented foods because they're an entirely different ball game. Right? There's so much emphasis today on kefir and kombucha and kimchi and yogurt. I think there's way too much emphasis on this stuff. I see too many people um, getting aggravations from putting kefir into their diet when it's dysfunctional. So if you've got a dysfunctional digestive system and you're drinking kefir every day, you can actually create a bigger problem you know, than you're trying to solve. So in my opinion, kefir is not a good drink when you've got very bad irritable bowel or SIBO or candida overgrowth. I'm finding the same with kombucha. I'm finding yogurt a lot less problematic with people, especially if it's a natural, sour Greek yogurt sourced from grass-fed you know, beef, good quality milk, especially full-fat milk. This tends to be a much you know, less problematic food when it comes to the gut than kefir that you make at home. So it's important to remember that yogurt is a culture with, where kefir is a ferment. Ferments can really play up on the gut. So just be careful with the culture and fermented foods. So let's look at some food sources, and I just want to tell you a few which I think are the best. I wrote an article on my website, ericbacker.com, which goes right into prebiotics and these particular foods. So remember, these foods also contain plenty of fiber. So they contain the fiber, 
and they contain the prebiotic sugars. And these, in my opinion, are great foods that help to heal up the gut and fix the gut. Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chestnuts, hazelnuts, pecan nuts, and almonds. So, you know, good snack is, is a few sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds, good to chew on. Rolled oats, a good quality oat that's been cooked in water, just plain water. Excellent food for the, for the digestive system, very soothing. A lot of mucilage in here, a little bit like slippery arms that will really heal the gut. Also provides glutamine, which helps to build cells lining the intestinal tract. Very good thing to do. Legumes, azuki beans, pinto beans, navy beans, mung beans. Very good to eat. Chickpeas. So you're going to get a lot less problem with these foods if you soak them first and then cook them instead of buying them in cans. If you haven't introduced legumes into your diet, then my, then my belief is that you should do it very slowly, slowly because your bacteria in your gut might not be ready to properly ferment these kind of things. You can get a lot of gas and bloating. So a good tip that I wrote about in my book is to put one drop of a Lugol solution or iodine, um, an iodine tincture, just one drop in a whole bowl of water that you're soaking these things in. That stops a lot of gas. The brassicas, my favorite vegetables. Cauliflowers, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, but don't eat raw kale, we discussed that. Uh, kohlrabi, Chinese vegetables like bok choy, wombok, uh, you know, these stir-fry vegetables. These are excellent source of fiber and prebiotic sugars in them. So these really go, uh, go down well in your tummy, especially if you partially steam them or stir-fry them. You're going to get very, very good digestive health if you eat these foods, because they're also detoxifying foods. They contain particular compounds that help to detoxify the liver. So these are anti-cancer foods. These are longevity foods. So try and make the brassic as a regular part of your diet. Green bananas, plantain bananas, very, very high in inulin. So excellent, excellent food. You can cook them in coconut milk. Now, would you believe it that raw cacao is excellent too for digestive health? And also cocoa, very high, 70% plus um, in, in the chocolate compound, is actually a prebiotic food, would you believe it? It actually feeds up the beneficial bacteria in the small intestine. So it's worth thinking about. Asparagus, globe artichoke, beetroot, and green beans. Green beans are fantastic food. They have to be my second or third favorite vegetable to eat. It's just very lightly steamed, crunchy green beans. These are a powerhouse of nutrition. They contain a lot of iron and phosphorus, a lot of calcium, a lot of B vitamins. And they contain also a lot of galacto-oligosaccharides and uh, fructo-oligosaccharides in them. So there are sugars in these that feed up the bacteria in the large intestine. When you start putting these foods regularly into your diet, you're going to build very good colonic health you'll notice that the stools will improve. You'll have better bowel motions. Garlic, onions, leeks, shallots, spring onions, and chives, that whole family, the allium family, contain very special compounds in them that actually help to wipe out a lot of fungus and bad bacteria. So I always recommend that you eat some of these, uh, these allium family every day in your diet, some onions in particular, either the red onions or the brown, the white onions. Try and eat some every day in some dish. It could be a cooked dish or a soup. It could be a stir fry. Uh, these, these are very special foods. You'll uh, end up with such great digestive health by combining both brassicas regularly in your diet and the allium family. And the last category, the one you need to be very careful of, because you can get a lot of bloating and gas very quickly out of these. The Jerusalem artichokes, burdock roots, chicory roots, and dandelion roots. So these contain huge amounts of inulin. So they call them farty chokes if you eat too many of them. So you may want to start with one small Jerusalem artichoke steamed or cooked and mixed in with your food. So these, in my opinion, are the superfoods when it comes to gut health. I want to caution you guys out there also about the use of prebiotics in dietary supplements. So many people now um, take actually FOS or GOS or inulin you know, these sort of sugars with a probiotic, thinking it's, it's good to do. We stopped actually <clears throat> using them in our clinic probably about four or five years ago now because we noticed we were getting increasingly emails and phone calls from people suffering from gas and bloating and feeling sick. 
when we were using probiotics with these sugars in them, so we stopped doing it. So back in 1995, when Dr. Marcel Robefroy uh, came up with the term prebiotic, uh, initially for the first few years, not much happened, but then the scientific community got quite crazy with it. And the supplement industry got really nuts with it, and they started to create all these supplements with these artificial prebiotic sugars. Uh, and they started to put them in the supplements. Supplements like 3LAC and Sintol, for example, still popular today. We stopped using them. We got too many people saying they were getting sick and bloated and problems. And so the problem also, in particular, uh, I think, with FOS is it actually feeds up bacteria like Klebsiella in your gut. Now, there are plenty of scientific papers that will show this online. So these are synthetic. Remember, these are not really natural. They say they're natural, but they're not really natural at all. They're made in factories. And Klebsiella is a normal bacteria, but if you build large numbers in your gut, like Candida, it's going to be a big problem. So when I started to see regular stool reports with very high Klebsiella counts and talk to the, the person you know, uh, who performed the stool test, I discovered to my horror that many of these people were taking two to three probiotics every day with the prebiotic in it. And then once I got them off that, we could wipe out the Klebsiella. So I would be cautious about taking a supplement with the prebiotic sugar in it. <clears throat> if you look at my Canzito Restore, there is no prebiotic sugars in it for that reason, because I'm not a fan of prebiotics in supplements. These are the kind of foods that you need to be eating because they contain natural prebiotics in them. Right? And if you eat yogurt, you're going to also take in plenty of uh, probiotics in that, in that product. So once your gut's feeling a lot better and it's healed and it's really improving, Another food I forgot to mention was chicken broth or bone broth. And again, you know, high in collagen and glutamine to feed up the gut. Very good feeding, building food. Once your gut comes up to a much higher level like mine, you know, you can start really thinking differently and put kefir into the diet and you can put kimchi into the diet. These foods actually will, will keep your gut in great shape. But to think you can build good gut health with these foods, just be careful. So avoid prebiotics in supplements. Avoid kefir and kombucha in particular until your gut is improved to a high extent. And think about more foods in your diet than the list that we just mentioned here to build a fantastic colonic health. And you're going to be in great shape. I hope that was some good information for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in.